it on photo by chance? Yeah. No, we're good. Uh, so we're going to do uh, a, a quick uh, case on uh, a young patient with respiratory distress. So dispatch for 26-year-old uh, female patient uh, who's complaining of an asthma attack. We arrive on scene, come into the college, safe environment. I see one patient. As I approach her, I see that she's sitting bolt upright uh, in like tripod position. She seems to be using purse lip breathing uh, as I'm seeing her, and she's breathing fast and looking very focused on breathing. Um, so she seems to be in severe respiratory distress. I walk in and say, hi, my name is Matthew. What's going on today? Hi. Um, I was walking to school, and I just felt short of breath, um, and I haven't been able to calm it down. Okay. And, and, and for the situation, I should have told you I didn't. Uh, well, let's say that she talks to us in like five word sentences. They're like short, she takes some breaths, speaks again for it. Uh, do you mind if my partner just takes some vital signs and stuff on you while we're having a conversation, if that's, if that's all right? So when did, when did this start? Your name, uh, I'm Matthew, what's your name? Maggie. Maggie. I always write down my patient's name because I'll forget. Okay. So, uh, uh, Maggie, how old are you? So, uh, when did this start? Uh, I was walking to school about 20 minutes ago. Okay. And when I got here, it got really bad. Okay. Uh, uh, in 20 minutes ago. Okay. Uh, and does this normally happen? Do you normally have problems with your asthma? Uh, no. Uh, have you ever had an episode like this before? No. No. Coming at you from all sides, <laughs> and sometimes if the patient's distracted a minute for whatever, I'm not going to keep asking questions. I'm just going to let kind of conversation center back around me, and I'll keep uh, plodding on at that time. <clears throat> and at certain times, you just have to say, "Okay, we'll just stop, and we'll figure out what's going on. And we'll get those after if it becomes too distracting." So I uh, started about uh, 20 minutes ago, uh, and it, it, you said that you walked over uh, to come to college, yeah. okay? And then you ha haven't been able to settle yourself down. When's the last time you had an asthma attack like this, or had an episode like this? It's been a really long time. It's been a really long time? Okay. Uh, does anything seem to make it better or worse? Has it got better since you stopped walking? No, it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. Okay. Don't find any position seems to make your breath any better or worse. I, I see you're sitting up, obviously. Um, okay. Um, and you say this feels like your asthma that you've had in the past? Yeah. How many years ago would you guess that it's been since you had an asthma attack? A couple years. A couple of years? If you were to rate this at a 10, 10 being the worst pain you've ever had, 0 being none, or sorry, shortness of breath, 10 being the worst shortness of breath you've ever had, or the worst asthma attack, 0 being <coughs> not having an asthma attack, what number would you give this? 7. 7? I'm just going to assess your pulse there. Okay, so if I'm understanding correctly, Maggie, um, uh, you, I, I, or how have you been feeling in the, in the last week? I had a cold for a couple weeks. Oh, does your asthma usually act up when you have colds? Can yeah. be more problematic. Yeah. Okay. Do you sometimes get triggered by like cold air, like today, and yeah. uh, exercise in cold air? Okay. Okay. Are you uh, allergic to any medications? Uh, okay. Let's say that she has a, a, a penicillin and peanut allergy. Okay. I'm trying to give my, myself some more differentials. <coughs> What medications do you take? Um, Just the Venolin uh, for your uh, and Flovent. Yeah. So you take the Flovent every morning and the Venolin just when your asthma acts up. Have you taken your Venolin buffer today? Yeah. Okay. It just didn't seem to have any results with it. Um, do you have any uh, history uh, of uh, any other breathing problems? Have you ever had been told you have pneumonia or bronchitis or anything like that? No. No? no I just had this bad cold for the last couple weeks. I haven't seen anyone about it. Oh, you haven't seen anyone about it? Have you been coughing at anything else? Uh, no. No, no coughing at anything else. Okay. Um, I haven't been noticing waking up short of breath at night or anything like that? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, no history of anxiety or depression? No. Um, any history of strokes or uh, seizures, migraines? Okay. Any
any problems with your heart? No. Uh, have, have never been told uh, that your heart races or goes too slow? No. No, no history of any heart murmurs? No. no. And you're young, obviously, you've never been told you have any ischemic problems like uh, angina or anything like that. No other heart history and no medications for your heart. Um, I, as far as uh, your appetite, how's your appetite been in the last, uh, last few days? It's been okay. Been fun? Uh, haven't felt nauseated today at all? No. No. Um, and it doesn't, because she doesn't have pain, doesn't seem relevant to dig into too much more on peptic ulcers or those, those types of things. So as far as diagnosed conditions and symptoms and risk factors, her risk factors are that she's an asthmatic. Are you a smoker? No. Uh, and you don't have a history of pneumonia or bronchitis? Okay. Uh, so that just moves on. Uh, last time you were to your doctor? And any other pieces that you think that are relevant that you haven't told me about your symptoms today? No, nothing else? Okay, we're just going to do a quick physical assessment. It's okay, we, so I'm just looking at blood pressure. We've got heart rate at 113, uh, SATs at 97%. Let's put her on a couple, uh, or 95, we'll put her on a couple of liters, get her up to 98, 99. Uh, it's fine. Um, are you feeling really short of breath still? Yeah. Okay, we'll just give her a couple of liters because uh, she has no history of chronic lung disease, so we can bring her up a little higher. Uh, if she has chronic lung disease, we try to get low stats or somewhere around uh, up to 92% would seem reasonable. Uh, she's a little bit uh, hypertensive, which goes with her elevated heart rate, and her respiratory rate's 53. I'm just going to glance back and see that she's still and see, have a look and say, is she getting better or worse? So when I get her vital signs, I go, the time that I've seen her, is she getting better or worse? Because that's really predictive of how things are going to go typically. <coughs> Let's say that she's not really changed a lot since I've arrived. Okay, I'm um, just going to shine a light in your eyes if that's okay. <coughs> I'm using the iPhone 4. I'm a, I, it's, it's, it's an oldie, but a very quality phone. Can you look at my <laughs> So I might see some jugular venous distension because uh, of if she's degree of air trapping depends on. If I was to have had a jugular reflex, it would return as per normal. She doesn't have middle of the neck jugular venous pulsation. No pain in your chest whatsoever. Okay, just gonna pop it on this right here. Trick is mid line. Um, so we'll just put that. Around. We'll just put it around her neck. We'll hook it into her nose. <laughs> okay, I'll do this way. Here. No, you're fine. Perfect. Around the collar. Perfect. It's fantastic. I'm just going to listen to your uh, lung sounds if that's all right. <coughs> so what I do uh, with patients, I'll just uh, work around here. So on uh, on button, top button, to get to apices, uh, or then or they will, because I'm trying to, <coughs> my fingers are not working. Wow. So I'll, I'll auscultate here and here, and then I'll untuck their shirt, so I'll untuck <coughs> my shirt, and I'll come up, uh, these shirts are forever long. And then I'll come up underneath uh, uh, her right and her left uh, breast, right up in, into here on either sides, and then up underneath here, just so you can know where I'm listening, okay? So I can do that without having to take her shirt off, or, okay? <clears throat> so just breathe in and out uh, through your nose. And I'm noticing as far as inspection, does she have a barrel chest? Uh, does, uh, do I see an accessory muscle use? It would seem reasonable with this respiratory rate that she would have some accessory muscle use, so that all goes with what I'm seeing. <clears throat> Any scars, rashes, or lesions I haven't seen in her face or neck either. Deep breath in. And, out. and breathe through your mouth if you don't mind. You'll get much better air entry. Okay, I'm just gonna. Deep breath. And over into your arm too. Because she hasn't had a cough, I don't need to do any bronchophony at this time. Okay, I'm just going to come around and listen to your back if that's okay. I'm just going to rotate so they can see. I'm going to listen here. And once again, I'd come up underneath her shirt and listen here in and out. Okay. 
Great. So I, let's say I hear wheezes throughout. I'm just going to tap on your chest a bit. And just up into your armpits. And I'd get much better resonance if I was actually under her shirt. Okay. Um, so normal resonance. She doesn't seem to be terrifically uh, extended. I'm just going to get you to take a nice deep breath for me, okay? And I'm going to actually feel her chest excursion, okay? To see how big of a breath can she take. So I'll say take a nice, the deepest breath you can. Any pain in your eyes? <coughs> so I did inspection, palpation, auscultation, and percussion. Uh, and no pain in your belly? Mind if I just push in your abdomen? That doesn't change anything at all. No incontinence. It's going to come down to your feet and just look for signs of cyanosis, really, and pedal edema. So look in her feet. No, no pedal edema. Cap refill is equal. At four seconds, because she's cold. Uh, can you squeeze? <laughs> I love that you, can you, squeeze, can you squeeze my fingers. There we go. And I'll see. I was, that was very instinctive. And cap is four seconds. Look for club fingers. Any cyanosis in the finger beds or anything like that. Okay, uh, so maybe I think uh, I, I think what's going on today. So I'll involve I'll involve the patient and my partner. <coughs> so let me know if you if anything comes to mind. And I tend to write my differentials down. So it seems like asthma. It seems it seems like this is uh, maybe uh, an uh, exasperated asthma uh, as you thought it was before you called. Uh, thanks for helping us out in that way. Um, uh, because of your wheezes and your history of asthma and just all the predisposing factors of you walking here and have a respiratory tract infection. You might have some bronchitis, but you haven't had a cough uh, recently, have you? Or just... Uh, there has been a cough. It has been coffee and coffee and anything up, just kind of dry and hacky. Okay, so maybe some element of bronchitis going on. When I listen to your lungs, I didn't hear anything. I might go back and uh, do 99 because of that cough history I misunderstood. So I'll just say I go back and listen to 99. No area. I wouldn't anticipate any areas of consolidation with her presentation and no productive cough. Um, so, uh, and with her wheezes and her <coughs> So asthma seems like our most convincing diagnosis. The other thing that could be happening is maybe anaphylaxis presents with wheezes as well. Uh, what's your anaphylaxis normally present like? Do you get a swollen tongue and vomit uh, and, and uh, then get uh, hives all over you? Is that yes. kind of common with it? So you don't feel like that at all today? No. Okay. When's the last time you even had an allergy reaction to a peanut? Uh, that was a few years ago. A few years well. ago and all those things happened? So you don't feel at all like that's happened or that that's a, even a remote possibility? No. So it doesn't seem like that? Uh, pulmonary embolism can also cause wheezes um, and maybe crackles in one area. Her SATs have improved with oxygen. Her degree of dyspnea isn't severe. Uh, it's, uh, I, I guess, it's not near death, uh, which lots of pulmonary embolisms uh, present like. Uh, she, uh, have you been sitting uh, for long durations any, uh, for any long times or anything like that? Yeah. No recent plane trips or anything like that? No, just Haven't had any sore legs or any swelling in your legs? Thinking about defang thrombosis that could cause the pulmonary embolism? And are you on birth control? Uh, no. No, not on birth control. Okay. Because that, uh, that increases risk of pulmonary uh, of clotting in general. <coughs> okay. Uh, so it doesn't seem like a pulmonary embolism. Um, and uh, doesn't seem like anaphylaxis. And maybe some bronchitis here. Partner, you think I'm missing anything? Oh, that sounds good to me. Okay, uh, that seems reasonable. So we're going to go with the differential. We're going to go with the working diagnosis of asthma. We're going to we're going to treat you with some venolin puffers, much the same you were having. If you want to grab those for me, that'd be awesome. Uh, and uh, <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to shake up those puffers. Do you normally shake up your puffers before you take them at home? Mm -hmm. And we're going to use a spacer. Do you use a spacer before? Not for, no, a, long not for a long time. Yeah, the spacer's in there as well. Is there, an, is there an atrovent one as well? It should be, but if I can, it should be. Okay. So we can give, depending on severity, not all asthmatics will get, but she's fairly severe, and we'll give, so I'll take one, uh, so we don't, we don't actually prime it beforehand, we can see that it works, well, but as soon as we spray it, I'll grab, uh, I'll grab you some new canisters, but let's just pretend for the time being if there's one there. Is there an atrovent? There should be an extra, uh, separate spray thing. Oh, perfect. Can I just steal that? Yeah. I just want to demo real quick, and what's we'll Where's our spacer? Awesome. So uh, I'm going to get Blake to sh uh, uh, shake one of those, 
and I'm going to shake one of these. Uh, so just when I'm going to give medications, I always think about it as far as medications. Usually I state my medications and then go through mentally my, con my indications and contraindications, and then I go and do it. I find once I get involved and somebody's like, oh, I have a spacer too, that's a different spacer, I get distracted. So I just make the decision on the medication, decide that it's appropriately indicated, not contrary. So Ventolin, no allergies, she's on it, right? She's taken it before. And she's not extremely tachycardic, and she's young, and she could handle that tachycardia anyways for the time being. Um, she has good energy. So uh, we'll just pretend that this is Ventolin for the... Uh, uh, and then Atrovent, I don't have any allergy. You have soy and peanut allergy, right? So maybe we should stick, steer clear of the Atrovent for the time being. Some places will just... Anyhow, it depends on... That, but that we'll hold to that soy allergy. So we're just going to go with the Benelin, so we're not going to give the Atrovent right now. Okay? So what, what I'm going to do is shake this up, um, check my date on my drug real quick. I usually pop it in and just have a look and see if it's good. And then I have the right puffer, not the wrong one. Uh, blue is Benelin. You'll get into other colors for different things. But Benelin, I know sometimes we'll use these and tape these, but they'll never, the only thing in this will be Benelin in a blue puffer. So we'll spray, uh, so what we're going to do is going to get you, I'm going to get you put your mouth uh, over this mouthpiece here. I'm going to spray the puffer and then you're going to breathe in slowly, okay? So I'm going to get exhale all the way, put in your mouth, spray, and hold as long as you can, then breathe out. I demonstrate the motion, okay? I find that's way uh, more informative than just saying the verb. I actually go, okay, breathe all the way, then puff. And if I actually puffed it, then I have to shake it for another 30 seconds. So we'll do, uh, so we'll do six sprays of Ventolin, uh, and then we'll get on our way to the hospital. Okay. So we'll stop there. Um, so